Welcome to Tritala Malaysia. My name is Karim Raslan and this week, after 12 exhausting weeks, we're here in Kuala Lumpur, the capital city and my hometown. We're here also overlooking the KLCC, the epitome of power, money and glamour, forces that drive this city, drive this country. Which also begs the question which I raised in the first episode, the question about whether or not this identity, which is Malay dominant, aristocratic, hierarchical, and top down, is it still resonant? Is it still relevant? Now, we've been across the country, we've been meeting people in Tamalo, in Kotabulut, in Cebu, Jili, Kuala Kedah, and Kluang, across the whole of Malaysia. I will seek to answer that question in this episode, but I'm also going to hang out with a very good friend and an artist, one of Malaysia's greatest artists. His name is Jailani Abu Hassan, who's also one of Kale's coolest dudes and seek to get his views as someone who's been invigorated by the events post 2008. What does he feel? How has his art making changed? And how will that guide us in our final, final conclusion? Born in 1963, as was I, so you're all going to be 50 this year. Big 5 0. Big 5 0. Yep. So tell me, 50 years, in the past 20 years that I've been following your work and collecting it, I'm a big fan of yours, as you know. Yep. I've seen your work change from being quite decorative, uh, recording things, to being more figurative, more satirical, and political. Why mm. is that? Well, as an artist, I'm looking yeah. at the, 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 the artistic point of view. Well, I'm, I'm a very restless artist. I can't, yeah. I can't stay put. Yeah. You know, you have to, you have to keep moving to keep, you know, to keep your work yeah. more, more, more alive and organic. Otherwise, you start and you become you, you rot. So I think by moving, not necessarily in terms of, a, in terms of a, uh, uh, stylistic, yeah. but in terms of issues you're dealing with, in terms of material that you, you try to. But it looks out. as if the issues now for you can, uh, they can learn much more. You are much more passionate about them. Yeah, yeah. You start to consider. Uh, what's happening around you? Yeah. You know what's, what what things that you can you can you can sort of reinterpret how 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 you how you sort of giving new ideas to what's happening around you. In particular, what things have really? Well, well, I think the most impactful thing is, is was after the, the election, last election. Yeah. I was taken back by by the whole the whole plethora of of, 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 uh, of political yeah. issues, you know? And then you start seeing things differently. And yeah. I, this, this, the, the, the nationness in you, you know, yeah. start to be more and more developed. So in a way, sense. you felt that you were woken up by the event. Yes, yes. I want to be part of the event. I want to be part of the, 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 the historical moment. You know, otherwise, you detach yourself, you, you're not on the, on the realistic uh, uh, plane. You have to be inside that. Yeah. So you see yourself as like an, an urban artist? But yeah. still rooted in, I mean, a lot of your subjects are quite kind of rural, urban, yeah, yeah. kampong to urban. How have you kind of manage that transition? Well, I come from a, from a, from a orthodox Malay community. Yeah. And then I was raised in, in, in Perak, I think Perak. And then, and then I've been trained overseas, yeah. uh, London and New York. And, and for some reason, you need to have that, that when you, when, as, the, the further you travel, the further you detach from, from your community, you, you need that that sense of belonging. Yeah, yeah. So I keep on pulling back, I keep on uh, anchoring back to, to my, my historical... Okay. So work there, you know, as you know, I bought, and it's like one of the gems that I have, and every day when I have breakfast, I look at it. Wow. Your Bomo Uja. <laughs> so tell me more about that work. Why, what does it mean to you? Well, it's very much... Um, well, it's a self-portrait, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I can say it's a self-portrait, or it can be anybody, yeah. but it's more on a historical reference, or it's more on a personal historical yeah. reference. Because my family come from the Bomo family. Yeah. My, my grandfather was a Bomo. Yeah. My mother kind of practiced certain certain yeah. uh, ritual Bomo thing. My father was a Bomo. My great great grandfather was a Bomo. And interestingly enough, my grandfather was a silat man. Yeah. And when in the kampong, when you teach silat, you have to have this shamanistic skill yeah. inside you. And my father was in the British Army, and he was in the medical team. 
So it has another BOMO, but in a different yeah. level of BOMO. So are you a BOMO I now am as an looking artist? At, I'm looking at myself as a BOMO. I'm a healer, yeah. sort of, to say. Yeah, you yeah, you yeah. heal the society, you, you, you sort of... So it's a hands again, isn't it? You work by your yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah. Very much, I need to... So it's like, the... it's like Shariman, we were in his studio 13 episodes ago, a long time ago, and he was a Tukang Besi. Tukang Besi, yeah. So in a way, you are uh, also a Tukang in different ways. Yeah. You, you are a Bomo, you're creating magic mm -hmm. on the canvas yeah, behind Yeah, us. you have your ingredient, yeah. you have your, your, your magic, magic potion yeah. with you. You sort of mix in the concussion and get the, the remedy or the... So, telling a story is another, another, another yes. ingredient yeah. that I have with me. And I have a long history of, of storytelling in the family as well. So, so that's where we yeah, that's together. why we yeah, connect. Yeah, yeah. I guess story that's telling. why we connect. But then the other one which I also got is the badur, which is about ah. the silver state. Tell me a bit more about badur. Is more 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 satirical. Yeah. It's more hilarious. Looking at what well, I was specifically dealing, uh, looking at the, the political situation in yeah. Pella at that time, and you know, how how the whole political game sort of govern our, govern our life. You know? Yeah. I was, so I was. Playing around, I was mockering the the, the, the event, yeah. the people who, 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 who sort of involved in that kind of thing. So I, I was looking at it in, in the hysterical point of view, mm -hmm. in the hilarious point of view. Everybody is a badot here. Everybody yeah, playing yeah. their own. Everything is a circus. Yeah, it's a curse. It's, 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 it's a theater sort of thing. And uh, yeah, that's how I, I, I. Do you see that being played out again this round? Can well, it's always there. We yeah. are, we're always a player on on, yeah, on, on yeah, a certain yeah. on the stage of life, and then you always. We carry multiple characteristics, you know, bado, the hero, villain, you know, and we keep on changing our head. Yeah. You know? How do you think now you're, you're all turning 50 as I am as well? How do you see our society coping with all these enormous changes, both Malaysian and Malay? Are we adapting well? We are adapting well. I think we are adapting very well, especially after the, the last election. And especially on the on the young artists and the young generation, I think the the concern of of the of the, the, the nation become yeah become the, the most talk, talk about topic, which is which was quite alienated when, uh, a few years back. Yeah, so artists start to get more self conscious about about the the mind, the, the thinking about about the nation. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very so you're saying artists now change. are more engaged in events yeah, and national interest. Yang masa kini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than being romanticized about the past, yeah. rather than talking about colonialism, things like that. I think, I think it's more current. They're more involved in, in, in what's going on. And I'm part of that changes. Yeah. Thing. And you find it very exciting? Or? Very, very much. It's very interesting. Because it's a real thing, Karim. It's not, it's not, it is a storytelling, but it's, it's, it's a real life. And it's our story. It's our own reality. Our Malaysian yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. So I, I like that very much. Wherever I go, I'm drawn to pasas, whether it's Temelo, it's Cebu or Kota Bulut. So I wanted you to see my pasa, and in respect, Pangsa Shopping Center is it for all it's worth. And it's here in the heart of the city, in the richest part of the city, that you see the coming together of money, power, glamour, things that have driven this city, made it so exciting to live in, and also in a way made it very, very, I'm sad to say, corrupt and difficult for very many purposes. So welcome to my pasta. As I crisscross the country, it's become very clear to me that the Krajaan, the government, is unable and at times unwilling to step in and resolve all kinds of problems. I personally do not believe that we should be so dependent on the government and that in turn we must be looking at our own resources as individuals, families and communities to step in. In this respect, I've looked at Zija in Cebu, who rose above the fact she had no documentation as a young woman and was able to build a family life and a career notwithstanding that. And then with the Dakuns in Keningau, this remarkable family, the brother who is Catholic, the sister who is an Ustaza, who notwithstanding the divide of religion, have been able to maintain their family ties, family bonds in all this time. And then thirdly, perhaps the most heartwarming, 
was the case of the Taman Sri Moni Flats in Salayang, where Ismail, the Bandahari, and all the community there, 480 flats in two blocks, after the developer had left, were able to work together to arrange for the kabusihan, the cleanliness, the electricity, the water themselves, and then create a community which was safe enough for young people, young families to grow up in. And the big success was the young Indian chap, Ponu, who is now a lawyer. So it is this type of self-reliance individual, the family, the community, that we should be fostering. And then I feel it is incumbent on the government to work towards. We're here at the crossroads of Jalan Bukit Bintang and Jalan Sultan Ismail. It's the most vibrant and dynamic part of this amazing city that I love so much. But I'm not here to talk about this. I've got to address that fundamental question of identity. What is the identity that we need and want here? Having traveled the country, listened to Molin and Abby, Ustad Harun in Jili, Bang Rusli over in Kuala Kada, Aheng in Kuang, I know we need an identity which is more inclusive, which is more of, uh, gives people a greater sense of belonging, and also one which is not so aristocratic and top-down, something which comes from the ground up, addresses the individual, the family, and the community more readily. And so I have to say, we need a change in terms of identity. There is no choice. And I hope next time Tritala Malaysia comes back on the road, we will see that change and I can record it and then I can document it. So for all of you who've been following me for the past 13 weeks, thanks very much until we meet again.